Hello and welcome back to Ellie Tops Tech. In today's video, I'm going to be demoing the Godax LCL 150 watt version two for you. I wanna show you how it looks with some of the different settings, how it looks with different cameras, and what you can kind of expect when you're operating this light. Now, I wanted to mention before we get into the video that a lot of the demos I've seen of this light are a little bit vague as far as how the camera settings compare to the light settings. So I will be showing you what some of my camera settings are as well as the light settings so that you can get a better idea of really how bright it is and how it works with some different cameras. So if you're ready, let's see how it works. So first up, we have the light with the reflector it comes with. You can see it's a very direct light. It does feel like a spot. There's a huge shadow behind me, and I am being blinded. It's at 20% right now. Um, this camera is a Canon EOS R6. Frame rate is 1 over 60. F-stop is 4. And I believe my exposure, let me just look here. Yeah, it's 160. So you can see this is just a lot of light coming in. And then over here on the camera behind me, so you can get an idea of that, I'm shooting in Technicolor's CineStyle profile um, on a Canon 90D. And that one actually locks you in on a frame rate. So it's one over 30, the f-stop is 5.6. And I think the ISO was also 160. Um, I'll double check and put it over that frame. So this is how this one looks. And without adjusting the exposure on this camera, I'm actually gonna turn the brightness up to um, 35% and blind myself so that you can see the difference and just how bright this light actually is. So that's the difference. And um, the temperature of the light is 5,600 Kelvins right now. You can adjust that temperature on this light as well. Um, but 56 is like on the cooler side of a pretty basic flat color temperature. So let's get uh, the, I can't even think with this light so bright. Let me just step forward a minute. <laughs> Okay, so we're gonna throw the parabolic box on, get some soft light going, and I'm gonna show you how you can use that light for both a more commercial, fully lit frame and a more uh, cinematic interview style look. Now we're looking at the light with a parabolic soft box that does not have a grid. So as you can see in that lower angle, it's just a white diffuser and then there's a smaller diffuser on the inside. And if you wanted your subject more center to that light, it's going to really evenly light them versus if you have them a little bit off to the side, you can get a little bit of that shadowy look, a little bit more drama, a little bit more mystery, right? So this light right now is at 40%. You can see it's pretty well lit. Um, and then if you wanted to even move this a little bit more directly center, uh, raise it up a little bit and shine it down, it would really fill the whole background with light as well and you would be getting more of that flat, evenly lit commercial look. You could also do um, this light plus a few key lights to really even out that lighting, but this is how that light looks at 40%. Um, with my camera settings the same, so my exposure is at 320 with um, 1 over 60 frame rate and an f-stop of 4. So we're getting a lot of great light from this. Now let's take a look at it with the grid. You can see that the grid immediately diffuses that light more. It's a little bit dimmer, even though the brightness of the light is the same. And this is really what you're going to see people using in more cinematic feeling interviews, photos, videos. Um, you've probably seen it in food photography or food videos online. I see this a lot, the use of this grid. So it's very standard um, commercially, and it's great to kind of help you control the light even more. Again, you can get that more shadowed look, you can get a more completely brightened look if they're looking right at the light. But at 40%, this is how we're looking with that same camera settings. Let me turn it down to 30%, which is what our reflector was at with more of that spot effect. So this is 30%, same exposure on both cameras. And you can see, again, just the slight difference, but I feel like this is such a powerful light for a low percentage of um, brightness that we're on. Now, the last thing I wanna show you with this light effect are the special effects. There's a flash warning for this. I just want you to know there's some strobing, um, flashing lights. I will not do it with me on camera because I sometimes have um, small triggers with that kind of lighting as well. So I'm gonna go behind camera and I will point it at just this backdrop so that you can see the um, different settings for that light. So this light is still on 30%, and I'm just going to go to the first FX. So this is strobe one. 
So you can see how that looks. This is uh, strobe two. It's a little bit slower. This is the third effects. This is four. I think if I remember right, and I talk about this in the actual setup when I go in depth on this light, but I'm pretty sure this is supposed to look like lightning. Number five is supposed to look like a TV. That only went one time. Oh, there it is again. Um, number six, I'll list them in the caption. I really don't remember. I'll superimpose it right here. Ellie from the future voicing over here. Uh, seven is supposed to be a candle. Eight is supposed to be fire. And a ninth effect is supposed to be fireworks. I'm using the reflector on the light while I do these effects so you have an idea of how that's being set up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and cut to when I filmed the channel welcome video for this channel because I used a key light when I did it. And then you can see how some of those um, lighting options work with just one key light and this main light. We have reached the part of this video where I'm gonna be talking to you about using a key light with the actual SL150 watt. So the kind of key lights that I'm using are by Neuer, or Neuer, if you're feeling more German. The model is TL336AS. It's a really simple key light with this um, panel diffuser that doesn't do much to actually diffuse, and it pops off just like this. You can use it without. Because I most often use this as continuous light to light a space that didn't have good natural lighting, I added a soft box to this setup and we're actually going to be using a softbox today. This portion of the video is being filmed in Canon's log profile for the EOS R6. Um, your frame rate is one over 60, your f-stop is five, and the exposure is 500. So just so you have an idea of how that's gonna look. I still have the light here, which is our big light at 30% with the grid on. And then you can see the outline of that key light on my arm here. You can make it a little bit more subtle by moving it, which I'll do right now. So you can see the light because I had to reposition it, but it's just creating some separation between me and the background. Another way you can do this is to actually light your background with a different color or a different color temperature. You can see that there's a different form of distance created between me and the background. Now the background is better lit, more brightly lit, I should say, than I am. Or I can decrease this uh, key light a little bit, point it right at the back of my head, which I'll show you next. And again, all of these are just preferences and styles of lighting that you can use to accomplish a certain look. But the important part is that this gorgeous big light here, the SL150 watt, works really well with the key light to um, properly light and intentionally light your subject. So now I've backed off that light. It's at a different angle and only pointed at me a little bit. And you can see there's still separation between me and the background, but it's just a different feel. So you have a lot of flexibility overall with this light, whether you're using a key light or you're just strictly lighting your subject with that single light. Final thoughts on the Godox SL150 watt version two video light is that it's a super versatile light. You can pair it with a parabolic softbox like I did for interview style, commercial video. You can use it with that reflector. I really think I would just use it for a spot or the special effects, which I'll show you more in detail on Thursday. But overall, it's extremely versatile. I've been super happy with it. I've shot with it a few times on some of my own projects already. And it's done a great job of lighting things by itself. Or you can add key lights or additional lights to create a different effect. Of course, you can always add more gear, right? But if you're looking for something to start out with that's pretty much like a workhorse light, I would say this is great. Did I film with four um, LED panel lights for years? Yeah, I did. But honestly, I love this too. So if you are adding a light to your setup or you're looking for a first light to get, this is a great one to consider. I'm gonna be pairing this with my LED panels to create some really great lighting effects for all of my future video projects. So I really hope this demo helped you learn a little bit more about how this light functions, how it can be used, the strength of the light, all that good stuff. If you wanna get more into a breakdown of how to set it up, all of the features, what comes in the box, how to use the soft box with it, I'm sharing that with you on Thursday. You can go ahead and hit subscribe right now so that you don't miss that video. I get really in depth with the setup 
and help you understand how to use it even better. In addition to that, I share new videos every Tuesday and Thursday, all about technology and gear. That's what we do over here. So I'd love to have you stick around. And if you have any questions or comments about this light or something else you'd like to see, go ahead and drop it in the comments. Make sure you hit that next video if you want to stick around a little bit longer today. And I hope I'll see you back here real soon.